Christ died for them, gave them grace, gave them a period to repent. Preach. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. Guess what? God says the pain that he's going to give them in the last days when they die, they're going to realize that the prophets were here teaching the commandments. They're going to realize that we were telling them the truth. And they're going to they're gonna be a pitiful case. They're going to they're gonna remember all their lives. They're going to say, God gave me a grace period and I, I, I neglected him every time. Every time I pushed away his laws. All right, so my name is Issachar. You have any other questions? That's it. That's it? But you got fringes on? You got, you got, you keeping the commandments? Well, I'm gonna start back. You gonna start back? All right, why'd you take them on? You know, life. Life? All right, all right, give me uh, second Andrew seven. I want you to hear this. Cause I want you to look around. I want you to look around at our people, right? They in a, a really bad condition, right? Second Andrew seven forty seven. Where, where, where you going? Second Ezra chapter seven verse forty seven, sir. You you got the pocket on the app? No, I don't. All right, that's the that's the book but, that it was. But, but I, I can go to the pocket. Right? But that's the book they took out in the seventeen hundreds, the yeah. Protestant Church. All right, so we're gonna read it. Read. Second Ezra chapter seven and verse forty seven. Huh? For what profit is is it for a man now in this present time to live in heaviness, and after death to look for punishment? All right, hold that. So the Bible's saying. What is it, it profits you, you men, you Israelites, to dwell in heaviness? you getting shot down in the streets. you see seeing abortion in all your neighborhoods, right? You see religion ain't helping us. You see voting ain't helping us. What's the profit of that thing? And, and still look for punishment when Christ come back. You, you in hell right now, and you're going to be in eternal fire when Christ come back. What's the profit in that thing? Read it from the top again. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 47. Huh? For what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness? Slavery, that's what you're in right now, read. And after death to look for punishment. But you're still going to die when Christ comes back. He's not coming to save you. He's going to kill you because you're in sin. Now jump to 49. Verse 49. For what profit is it unto us? If there be promised us an immortal time. Because the promises pertain to you. When you read Romans 9 and 4, it says the covenant was given to the Israelites, the promises. Everything in the Bible is given to you, bro. So what's the profit of those promises give, be given to you and what? Whereas we have done the works that bring death. Give me that in Romans 6, 23. What are the works that bring death? Keeping God's commandments give you life and something gives you death. Let's, let's, let's go precept to palm precept, read Romans chapter 6 verse 23 For the wages of sin is death So guess what? The same way you get paid when you work If you're not doing the works of God You're going to get a payment Guess what? It's going to be death Christ is coming back to kill He ain't going to be coming out with no flowers and kisses The black Messiah is coming to put things in order That means he's destroying right. all the kingdoms that are on earth Russia, uh, Germany, America All those kingdoms that had us in the oppression They're going to be destroyed And he's going to put us back in order He's going to make you uh, in rulership of the earth That's what heaven means It means rulership uh, Give me Acts 1 and 6 Let's, 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 let's show them Let's show them real quick I'm going to give you this one And then I'm going to give you another scenario in the Bible That shows you that we were, we were always looking for Christ to redeem us Read Acts chapter 1 verse 6 When they therefore were come together they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they wanted to know, was Christ coming to give them the kingdom again? But at that time, it wasn't ready because all this had to happen. The prophets had to wake up. We had to teach our people their nationality. All those things because at that time, Paul, give me Romans 11 and 1. Paul knew his nationality. You know who Paul is? What, what tribe was Paul? I don't know what tribe. All right, let's deal with it. You know who the, uh, you know who the, um, Watch this, read the sign right here. Judah, Benjamin. Benjamin, West Indian Blacks. All right? So when you picture Paul, you need a picture of a so-called West Indian brother, all right? right? Read. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Bring it up. I say then, has God cast away his people? That's the number one question that we ask when we come out here. Did God destroy the Israelites? Are the Israelites not on earth anymore? Read. God forbid. Hell no. They still here. They're right in front of your face. They're teaching you the Bible. Read. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. So Paul, he was living in the Roman Empire, right? He went back and he said, I come from Abraham. That's in, that's in Genesis. 
He went all the way back to Genesis and said, I know my lineage. Read. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And then he went into Egypt and he said, he went past Isaac, he went past Jacob, and he went into Jacob's son, Benjamin. He said, I know all my lineage. I can go all the way back to Benjamin. I know I come from Benjamin. There's a brother right here I met today, uh, the other day. He comes from Benjamin. He's right there. Big swole brother right there. You see him? Oh, yeah. All right. So officer, he, he was telling me he's Benjamin. Guess what? How can he know he's Benjamin? Because let's see what Paul said. Paul was in Rome. That's thousands of years after Egypt. And he knew his nationality. So what, what makes, it, makes you any different? You can know your nationality when you read the Bible because our forefathers did it. All right, read it again from the top. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, has God cast away his people? So when I look around, is the, is, are the Israelites still on earth? Yes, they're out here. They smoking. They out here selling drugs to each other. They out here in a, in a bad condition because they don't know who they are. So that's what the prophets Yo. are doing. They out here teaching our people their nationality. Right. They out teaching them how to keep God's commandments. Read. Right. Has God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So, so Paul knew his nationality. So that means you should know your nationality. You said what tribe were you? Look at the sign, look at the sign. Which one are you? Granddad is Jamaican. You Jamaican? My granddad. Your granddad? So that means you're what? Israel. Israel. So look, you're, that's your grandpa right there. You read about your ancestor right there. So when you when you, when you read the Bible, you gotta understand it's a history book. This book, give me numbers 33 and through. This Bible talks about Ramses, it talks about King Cyrus, it talks about uh, uh, Julius Caesar, all of those men you can find in history books, right? So guess what? This is a history book. I want to just prove it. Read. Numbers chapter 33, verse 3. Bring it out. And they departed from Ramses. From who? From Ramses. Is that guy make-believe? Is that Harry Potter right there? Or was that a, a real character in world history? Read. And they departed from Ramses in the first month on the 15th day of the first month. Give me Ezra 1. Uh, about King Cyrus. Let's see, about, let's see King Cyrus. Is that is that a person that was alive in the world? That You can look him up, right? So let's see. Because they always try to say, oh, we don't have bones of our prophets. The Bible says we're not going to have the bones of the prophets. But guess what? The Bible goes into all the other nations and all the kings they had. Alexander the Great's in the Bible. Darius is in the Bible. Xerxes is in the Bible. But guess what? Huh? Alexander. Alexander, right? So we got to understand that this is a history book. And our history book, this is our, bro, this is your photo book. This shows you all your forefathers, all right? Read. The book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia. Hold up, did the Persians, were the Persians a real, like, people that had the world under their submission? Yes. You got the, you got the Egyptians, right? Did you know that the Israelites were under Egypt? We were in slavery, right? Then Assyria, we were under slavery. Then Babylon, then the Persian Mede, then the Greeks. Then the Romans, and then who are we under captivity now? America. America. That's biblical prophecy. The Bible told you that we were going to go into slavery until right. Christ came back the second time. So guess what? The last captivity is the one we're living in right now. But what we, what what should we do so we can get saved? Give me our uh, second edge is nine. Start at one. I want to show you something because Donald Trump is doing a lot of great things right now. He's messing up the so-called Hispanics. Why? because they need to wake their asses up. They over there, they think they good because they speak Spanish and they got the Virgin Mary and all that good stuff. They think they good, but guess what? This ain't they rest. So God is stirring them up. He's causing Donald Trump to do horrible things to them. Read. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter nine, verse one. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. So when you look at the news, figure out where in the Bible does that fit? Because have you heard? Um, have you heard that in the news, Donald Trump? Uh, he shook hands with the little Chinese dude. What's his name? Kim Jong. Kim Jong Wu, right? He shook hands with him. The Bible talks about that when they, when people are at peace and then destruction comes out of nowhere. The Bible talks about that. So when we saw that, we were like, "Yo, hey, we in the last days for real." You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, go ahead. In the book it said, uh, "The last dictator." Uh huh. About the last dictator. So I knew it was fulfilling itself. Okay. Out all praises. All praises. We're gonna read now. Read. Read. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time 
wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So when you read Matthew 24, it talks about earthquakes in diverse places. Mexico got destroyed. You got Guatemala that got destroyed with the volcano. You got all these things happening around the earth. God says these things are signs to identify that you're living the last days. Read. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Because in the Bible, he said he wrote the end from the beginning. So guess what? All the things that he wrote, he wrote about Alexander during Daniel. He told you Alexander was coming. And guess what? He came and he had four generals like Daniel talks about and all of those things that he wrote. And it happened exactly how God said it was going to happen. Now jump to, um, give me seven. Now let's see how you're going to get salvation. Because that's what you're here for, right? You're not to stand in front of us to look good. You're out here to find out how to get the kingdom, right? Read. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved. So God says all the people on the earth that are Israelites that are going to be saved when Christ come back. Read. And shall be able to escape by his works. You're going to be able to escape the nuclear warfare by your works. Read. And by faith. You got to have faith in Christ. That means you have to keep the commandments. Have you ever read the back of uh, our brother's shirts? Hey, turn around. Let, let me see this. Look at this. Sis. It says, Revelations 14 and 12. Here's the patient of the saints. We're the saints when you read Psalms 15 and 5. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That's why we're called Israel united in Christ. Let's turn around. Because we believe in Christ and we keep his commandments. We have faith in Christ, bro. So this scripture is going into that. You got to have faith in Christ and keep the commandments. Read. Whereby ye have believed. And that means you believe in God if you really do those things. Read. Shall be preserved from the said perils. Those perils are when you read in the Bible, it says your eyes are going to consume away in your, in your eye sockets. Your tongue is going to disintegrate in your mouth. When you read Zechariah 14 and 12, it's talking about that peril. You're not going to have to feel that. Have you ever read about um, Daniel about the three holy children? When they got thrown in the furnace and nothing happened to them? They didn't. They didn't they, they, all right. So the same thing. We're going to read about that. Well, I, want, I want you to be able to envision what's going to happen when Christ come back. He's going to be right beside you. The fire ain't going to touch you, bro. Read and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for i have sanctified them for me from the beginning so he, you're going to get salvation you're going to get the kingdom but let's see what happens to the other people read then shall they be in pitiful case but the people who went to church every damn day and didn't keep no commandments they're going to be a what case shall be in a pitiful case they're gonna be pitiful have you ever seen somebody you're like damn that, that's a pitiful brother right there they're gonna be pitiful those catholics those christians so-called christians they're gonna be a pitiful case read which now have abused my ways they abuse god's ways they eat pork all the damn time they go to church and then they eat pork the, the same damn day read and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. They're going to be dwelling in torment. God says everlasting fire. Read. For such as in their life have received benefits. You got the Mayweathers. You got all these people that got benefits right now. They don't need to ride a bus. They got five cars. All right, read. And have not known me. And they never knew God. And hold that. Give me 1 Corinthians 8 and 3. How do you know God? You know, watch, we're going to deal with it. How do you know God? Christians don't know God. So-called Christians, religious people, they don't know God. Let's see how you know God. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 3. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. If you love God, give me love God. 1 John 5 and 3. What is loving God? Now we got, remember, precept upon precept to get the understanding, right? All right, all praises. Watch this. We're going to let God be true so everybody can be edified. Read. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. Bring it out. For this is the love of God. So we're talking about the same thing that Corinthians was talking about. That's how God knows you, read. That we keep his commandments. So you see, it's easy, right? Now go back to Ezra. So in order to be saved from those perils and not be a pitiful case, you got to keep the commandments, right? Read. Verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case. Huh? which now have abused my way. Go ahead. And they that have cast them away, despitefully shall dwell in torment. Read. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And they that have loathed my law 
They hate God's laws when the prophets teach the laws. Well, they had yet liberty. Christ died for them, gave them grace, gave them a period to repent. Preach. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. Guess what? God says the pain that he's going to give them in the last days when they die, they're going to realize that the prophets were here teaching the commandments. They're going to realize that we were telling them the truth. And they're going to they're gonna be a pitiful case. They're going to they're gonna remember all their lives. They're going to say, God gave me a grace period and I, I, I neglected him every time. Every time I pushed away his laws. So they're going to understand that, all right? So guess what? We out here trying to show them that. Now give me uh, uh, Daniel. Hey, one last thing. I want to show you. I want you to visualize when Christ come back and then bombs hit. When them bombs hit, you're not going to feel them, all right? It should be like three. Yeah. It should be Daniel. Huh? What, hey, what you chewing, bro? Oh, tobacco. Tobacco? Hey, we know that's a sin, bro, right? You got, you got to change that thing. So I started 19, 3 and 19. Watch this. So you got hey, to spit that out, bro. Because remember, it said, what's the point of living in, in, in this? Oh, that's good. All praise. What's the point of living in this situation and then still get death, all right? Yeah, man. I feel all right. moment, man. That's what I'm feeling kind of Hey, crazy. but you got to be around righteous men. If you're around righteous men, we're not going to let you smoke. We're not going to let you do a sin, all right? And we're not going to tempt you to do it. Because I'm not going to be looking at, at, at porn. I'm not going to be trying to smoke weed or none of that. Right. But guess what? When you're around me, you're going to be keeping God's commandments. Right. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you up to that. All right? That's why God says two are better than one. Like this, I know, but God says two are better than one. All right? But I want to show you something before you leave. Read. Daniel chapter 3, verse 19. Bring it out. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these are your brothers right here. They, they, something's about to happen to them, and Christ is going to save them. This is what's going to happen to you if you keep the commandments. Read. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one, seven times more than it was wont to be heated. He was like, turn that thing up, because I'm about to throw these Israelites in there. Read. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So this this heathen, he didn't he didn't just grab no lames. He grabbed some strong men to grab the Israelites. Read. And to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Read. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, pants. That means men wore pants. Read. And their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. All right, so they were, th they were thrown in the furnace, in the fire. Let's see what happens to these men. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the other nations, the, the big mighty men that grabbed us, they got killed by the fire. But let's see what happened to the three holy children. Read. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down, bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Read. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up and said, He cast three men bound into the midst of the fire. Then answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Hold on, hold on. How many men were in the furnace? Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hold on, Christ is in the Old Testament. Read that again, the bottom part. The fourth is like the Son of God. So Christ was in the midst of them, and guess what? The fire didn't touch them. It didn't, it didn't, they didn't even smell like smoke, nothing. Their, their garments were the same. So guess what? If you got your fringes on when Christ come back, keeping the commandments, your fringes ain't going to be harmed, your shirt ain't going to be harmed, your hair still going to be on your head, and you're going to get the kingdom of heaven. That's salvation. That's what salvation is going to look like when Christ come back. But if not, you're going to be a pitiful case. Right. And that's why you got you to gotta repent from the sins that you're in. You got to examine yourself, right? But let your brothers be around you so that we can apply Leviticus 5 and 1. If we see you in sin, we're going to tell you, bro. We're going to tell you, hey, bro, you can't do that. That's a sin. Hey, let's go into scriptures. Let's prove it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you got to do. What's your name again? Mando. 
Fernando? Yes, sir. Hey, hey, man, look. I'll come check us out. We got I'll a free website. Hey, now nah, don't just come here. Come to the school, be around your brothers, and, and stop sinning, man, so you can get the kingdom of heaven. Right. Because Christ is going to come back as a thief at night. Nobody ever stays up all night with a gun and says, yeah, I know the thief is coming tonight. You're going to be chilling. You're going to be relaxed without the fringes, and Christ is going to crack the damn sky. You're going to die, and you're going to be burning forever. So God says, make haste. Remember, he read it to you earlier. Make haste. Keep the commandments, bro. That's Psalms 119 and 59 through 60. Okay. Check that out, all right? So, hey, it was great talking to you. Shalom. Shalom. All right, shalom, shalom, bro. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org